So there's a bushfire on the I-17. That's the main road to go north out of Phoenix. And the delays were over an hour with the road closures. And I don't like sitting for an hour. So we've come by way of Wickenburg, which is quite a few miles out of the way, but no bushfires. When we reached Wickenburg and we put the GPS coordinates in to get us to the turnoff here, it still said it wanted us to go all the way back to Phoenix and drive up the freeway, even with an hour delay. When I finally forced it and overrode it, I found out that it was really only a 10 minute difference. But GPS logic being 10 minutes is 10 minutes. So we are now at the turnoff of the dirt road. This is the part I don't like, but we're about to go take the Prius up to camp. It's our first night at camp. The campers arrive tomorrow, but most of our staff and their families have arrived. Uh, we come in early, get things set up, get things ready to go campers come in tomorrow afternoon. This year is going to be different. There are two major differences. One is I've got internet. It's not fast, but it's a lot more reliable than what we had before. It's enough that I can actually post pictures and I can carry on email with parents if need be. Not that I want to, but you know, sometimes and plus we can keep them um, updated so that's that's fantastic that's fantastic news plus we can I can use my Verizon wireless I can actually make a phone call out of here now so um, we welcome to the 20th century here I guess it's not fair that's still the 21st um, and the second is that I've got a new cabin this year uh, they had a little small cabin next to the um, lunch hall. And originally they were using it for storage. And then they, it was supposed to be a cabin, but they were using it for storage. And then they converted it to a, a storage room for their um, educational materials. But last year they were converting it and they've converted it back to a cabin. But better, they've converted it to an office cabin. And so it's mine. And it's got some things that that we've never had before. One, I'm next to the lunch hall, which is where the Wi-Fi is, so I have Wi-Fi here. Two, it's got a desk and a chair, as opposed to sitting at a, on a camp stool at a, a dresser, small dresser at that. So I've got a desk, I've got a chair, I've got three electrical outlets in this room solar powered, so I've got power all night. And, uh, and I've got a bed, not a camp bed. See, here's a camp bed. See these, I camp bed. I have a bed. Mattress and box spring. Oh, this is amazing. Um, I'm loving this. What a difference. A night can make. Uh, hard to say it was up at five. It's about 5.30 now. But I gave up pretending to sleep at five. It was just a terrible night's sleep, tossing and turning and I didn't think I'd ever get any sleep. This cabin is a stone cabin, and it held the heat in a lot better, so I didn't sleep in the sleeping bag. I slept under a sheet. That was nice. My watch says it's 58 outside, but that's not true. That will be the reading from Prescott Valley, which is 
a thousand feet lower than here. So it's in the low 50s, I'd guess. I think I'll go up and turn the. Oh, I'll go turn the generator on. That'll be fun. Okay, well, I've got the generator on. And uh, I've just come up for a, a walk through camp using the gimbal to get a kind of a pass through it. I may take a couple more passes through a couple more routes. And, uh, and I'm also vlogging with it. It's a lot more peaceful when the generator's not on. One of the two telescopes is dead. That's a bit disappointing. Motor isn't working. We've had multiple wild turkey sightings at camp today. Um, I only caught the briefest of glimpse of one or two. And, uh, <clears throat> as I've already mentioned, if we've had we know there's squirrels, we know there's elk, we know there's deer, we know there's a cougar, 
in the area. Last year, of course, I got a raccoon and a coyote uh, with a game cam up here. So there's a, a location out here, which is outside the area of the camp where people normally <coughs> act. It's uh, just beyond the, the lake. And uh, there's a, a low ropes course here that's kind of out of condition. And I guess the new orienteering course is out here. Uh, but also at the very top, there's a turkey guzzler, which is a rain tank collector that collects rainwater and then has an underground channel and goes to a feeder that uh, feeds a little watering hole. And then uh, it attracts wildlife. And since it's far enough away from the camp, um, you, know, you get a little rarer stuff that's not willing to come in uh, near people. So I've just been up placing the game cam there. Uh, I placed one near the lake yesterday. And I'm gonna take the um, SD card out of it and I'm gonna swap it with another one and then take it back down to the camp and see if I got anything. And hopefully tomorrow, I'll have some awesome stuff on the the one up by the turkey guzzler. I'd love to get a, a very safe picture of that cougar. I don't want to personally have to encounter the cougar because they're freaking dangerous. But, uh, yeah, at a distance, an extreme distance, with safe and security nearby would be okay. But a close-up shot on the game camera would be amazing. It's Wednesday. Uh, so midweek, usually by now the kids who are having a little trouble being away from home are uh, settling in. And that seems to be the case. Um, didn't get any pictures of the raccoon from the game camera. I placed one in the compound last night. Didn't get any animals at all. I'm just up here pulling the pictures from the one by the turkey guzzler. I suspect there'll be something on that. Um, the last batch I got quite a lot of deer and an elk, uh, but nothing, you know, some birds, but, but nothing else. No coyotes, no coyote cougars, no raccoon. <laughs> so don't know what's on this batch. We'll see. This morning was a hike. Uh, many of these kids have never been on a hike. I can't say these are particularly grueling about four and a half kilometers but for some of them <clears throat> it's quite an accomplishment and I have to say my legs were hurting a bit when I got back to camp and so now I'm hiking up to the game camera which is another two kilometers just to uh, fetch the pictures otherwise camp's going well a little late but this is about the time that I startled the deer coming up on the game camera now I haven't had to climb that hill once this week and I won't just wanted to do this update just before I upload this um, TDM Unlimited because uh, I haven't recorded anything. I don't think I've recorded anything since I came back um, at all. Camp is over. Everything went on fine. Um, yep, yeah, that's about it. Camp's over. Everything went fine. Um, if you want to see some of the activities that happened at camp, check out the Camp Quest Arizona YouTube channel 
or the Camp Quest Arizona Facebook page. Um, and uh, posted some videos that I shot there of some of the activities. Obviously, I don't do that here for mine because I don't have the right to show the kids um, and, and wouldn't do that. So you, everything you see here is just generic camp stuff, but it went well, it was a lot of fun, another successful year, all good. While I was at camp, no, let's stay back. A couple months ago, May, yeah, a couple months ago, you may recall that I discovered that Hot Star US, the Indian television company, was streaming the India Premier League T20 cricket tournament. And so I subscribed and, and if I mentioned it before, Willow TV is the company that normally does cricket here in the United States. That's like 50 bucks a month. And there's not that much cricket, <laughs> okay? You know, it just, and I'm not, 50 bucks a month is too much. Because I'm not interested in most, you know, I, I don't care about test cricket uh, at all. ODIs need to be summarized. Um, I admit it, it's an American attention span. T20 cricket is where it's at. In any case, uh, I subscribed. I had the 30-day free trial. Then I only paid $10 to finish off the IPL. I thought that was great. Uh, I asked them about what their future cricket was because, eh, 10 and they wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't tell me what matches they had upcoming. So I unsubscribed, as you can do. Well, while I was at camp, I received an email from them saying, streaming live now, we have the Canadian Global T20 cricket tournament between now and July 15th. I'm like, I've never heard of a Canadian T20. And I looked and it was, it was, uh, it's the first officially sanctioned international T20 tournament, so ICC sanctioned, in North America, on North American soil. Um, trivia note, as I understand it, the very first international cricket match ever played was between Canada and the United States, which is just funny, since neither country is particularly big on the, the cricket. But anyway, Canada has this thing going on in Toronto, which is basically the east coast of Canada, but not on the coast, but the eastern part of Canada, between now and the, the 15th of July. And so I went ahead and resubscribed to get those matches. And I started watching them and it's like, hey, this, there's some big names on here, Chris Gale, and uh, there's also some people who are a little disrepute, David Warner, Steve Smith, both of who are kind of being sanctioned for their ball tampering recently in Australia. Um, but there's, uh, there's not many Indian players because I think they're playing Pakistan right now, but there's uh, West Indies players and some Australian players and, and on these teams with international. It's like, wow, well, this, is, this is the closest I've ever been to a tournament. There was that time I was trying to get to the world final at Lords that bottomed out because of the Republicans, um, destroying the world economy. We haven't learned yet, have we? Anyway, Chuan always wants to go to Canada. He's like, oh, let's go to Canada. And I'm like, eh, it's in Canada. Well, all right, here's your chance. We're going to Canada. We're going to Canada. I checked the prices. It's not cheap, but it's not outrageous. It's under, uh, we got airfare in the 300 to 400 range per person. And uh, um, so we're going tomorrow. Booked the tickets yesterday. We're going tomorrow to Canada. I've got the tickets to the final on the 15th um, covered so that Juwan will not complain about the fact that we're sitting out in the sun. And um, yeah, we're going. Don't know who's going to be in the final yet. Don't really care because I don't really have any emotional attachment to any of the Canadian teams, Vancouver, Toronto, whatever. Um, uh, the West Indies has their B team up and they're beating the crap out of everybody else so far. So I suspect we'll be seeing them in the finals. But, um, yeah, yeah, I'm, we have to get up at 2.30 in the morning tomorrow. So, I am finishing things off, finishing podcasts off, scheduling for the trip, going to get this posted so that you know that the next one you see is likely to be Canada, here we come. And uh, that's it. 
So until next time. See you on Tedium Unlimited. Yeah, it doesn't work, does it? I used that on Fusion Patrol, but it's, you know, on... see you next time on Fusion Patrol. That works, but next time on Tedium Unlimited. Nah, it doesn't. It doesn't fly. <laughs>